When I was in sixth grade, I wrote down all of my goals on post-it notes and stuck them to my bedside table so I could remind myself as I was going to bed and waking up every morning of what I was pushing myself to achieve and the type of person I wanted to be. I wrote, try out for the school musical, make friends with a person in each of the friend groups at school, and get into Stanford to play both softball and soccer, slightly more aggressive than the other goals. Now, as a junior in high school and someone that's put a lot of thought into the college admissions process, I began to wonder where this idea came from in the first place. It wasn't from my parents. I knew they'd be proud of me no matter where I ended up, as long as I, would, I was working hard. And it certainly wasn't my sixth grade teachers telling me that if I didn't memorize the state capitals, I would never get into Stanford and become successful. And I was no outlier. Recently, I was speaking with one of my friends and she was reading me the letter she wrote in fifth grade to her future self. She had written, never give up on your dream of going to Stanford or Harvard. She wrote that in fifth grade. So where were we, as kids that had years before we had to start thinking about college, getting the idea that we had to go to schools that accept less than 5% of their applicants? Where were we even hearing about these schools in the first place? Let's start with her. For those of you that have never seen the Disney Channel original movie, High School Musical, this is Ga Gabriela Montez, a model student and member of the academic decathlon team who loves to sing and committed to Stanford University. Teddy Duncan from the show Good Luck Charlie, committed to Yale. Hannah Montana, AKA Miley Stewart and her best friend Lily, committed to Stanford. Bailey from Sweet Life on Deck, to Yale. And Allie from Austin and Allie was rejected from Harvard. Surprising. But after scoring a do-over interview, she was accepted. How many people do you know that got to have a do-over interview? Now, I'm not gonna say that all of these acceptances were completely outrageous, but think about the seed that's being planted in young kids' minds. The smart characters go to Stanford, Harvard, and Yale. Not even the other Ivy League schools. When Cody from Sweet Life on Deck was rejected from Yale and being comforted by his mother, she said, there's always Princeton, and he responded, and I quote, the armpit of the Ivy League. And when she suggested Brown, he called it a glorified junior college in an ugly color. And it's a similar story for shows like Gilmore Girls. Rory Gilmore was accepted to Harvard, Yale, and Princeton after her only main achievements being her GPA, her position on the school newspaper, and the fact that she was vice president of her class. Same goes for shows like Glee, Gossip Girl, and the Netflix original shows and movies that reach the newer wave of impressionable kids and teens. Given that so many of the smart characters go on to these elite and uber competitive colleges, it's no surprise that so many young kids would aspire to do the same. Generally, these characters are the logical, responsible ones the voices of reason for many of the shows they're on. So many watchers, including sixth grade me, looked up to them as role models. But adopting this mentality at such a young age can be very dangerous. There are almost 27,000 high schools in the US, meaning there are almost 27,000 valedictorians. However, the pa in the past year, Harvard accepted under 2,000 applicants into the class of 2025. In 2016, Stanford only accepted 8% of their applicants that scored an 800 or perfect score on the math section of the SAT. It's not enough to have perfect grades or perfect test scores. Students that seem like they're shoe-ins to everyone that knows them are getting rejected at unbearably high rates. It's easy to fall into the mindset of thinking, if I just had blank, then I'd be happy. However, or for many people, this, this would be a boatload of cash, the perfect body, or an acceptance letter from, from, from blank university. Putting all of your self-worth on a singular item or achievement is toxic and leaves you feeling empty and disappointed if you can't have it. In a time when many people are tailoring the way they spend their time to appeal to the college admissions boards at certain colleges, it can also feel like the entirety of how you spent your high school years was a complete waste. This attitude is dangerous even for the tiny percentage of applicants that are accepted into these top schools and are watching their lifelong dreams come to fruition. The, if I just had blank, then I'd be happy attitude is simply untrue because of a process called hedonic adaptation. 
Hedonic adaptation, as was explained to me from the Yale online Coursera course, The Science of Wellbeing, is the process of becoming accustomed to both positive and negative things, so their emotional effects dissipate over time. This feature of, of the mind can be very helpful in scenarios like a painful breakup or the loss of a family member, because although you originally think, my life is over and there's no way I'm going to recover from this pain, your brain eventually adapts to it and you're able to carry on. However, in the scenario of being accepted into college, students do not feel the same initial exuberance and joy that they felt upon opening their acceptance letter when they're waking up their junior year to head to their midterms. Eventually, the college you go to simply becomes the college you go to. And this doesn't have to be a bad thing, as long as you still love your school and the environment it fosters. However, if you committed simply based off of how proud you were to say the name and wear the sweatshirt, this can be very problematic. The mentality of striving for awesome things or impressive accomplishments and basing your happiness around that is not only toxic in the context of college admissions, but also in every aspect of your life. In a study done in 2003 by Nickerson and colleagues, they surveyed college freshmen on their materialist, materialist attitudes. For example, how much do you want this really awesome car? Or how much do you want this really cool stuff? 20 years later, they found that those that had materialist attitudes reported having much lower life satisfaction and more diagnosed mental health disorders, no matter how financially successful they were or weren't. When the effects of getting something new and exciting wear off, you're left with a void that many people attempt to fill by acquiring more and more cool and exciting stuff. However, none of this is going to lead to long-term happiness because of hedonic adaptation. So what lifestyle does lead to more fulfillment and happiness? Reverse the mindset of waiting for happiness to come as a result of certain possessions and achievements, and think about the things that you do that genuinely bring you happiness, or the core values and principles that leave you feeling fulfilled. And base your life and the way you spend your time around that. Circling back to college admissions, this would mean that rather than molding who you are and the way you spend your time to appeal to certain college admissions boards, spending the time pursuing passions that feel meaningful to you, and choosing your college and looking for colleges based on which schools align best with your interests and your priorities. This idea is not groundbreaking or new in any way, and I guarantee you that anyone that has just gone through the college app process or is about to go through it has heard it many times before. At our school, they often say that choosing a college is not about winning a game. It's about making a match. And this idea should theoretically make sense to anyone that hears it. However, I was just recently speaking with one of my friends on the schools she's thinking of applying to. And she said, oh yeah, I would never apply to Harvard. It's way too small, it's too far from home, and it seems like the environment there would be way too competitive for me to be happy. But if I got in, I would still go, since it's Harvard. It's not enough to understand and agree with an idea to be able to change the way you live. It is essential that you put it into practice and retrain yourself to actually live based on what makes you happy. However, most of the high schoolers that I know aren't going to abandon the I'm going to work harder than everyone else and get into the top college mentality and suddenly decide that it doesn't matter how prestigious the school I go to is as long as I can find happiness there. Because it's so hard to get people to reject the idea that's been ingrained in them since they were kids, we need to be changing the narrative from a much earlier age. Disney Channel needs to feature students that are going to community college because they weren't ready to move away from home yet, not because they weren't smart enough to get in anywhere else. Or students that have a very specific astronomy program or music program at some lesser known college that they're really excited about going to. For every kid that wants to go to college, there's, there are schools out there that they will thrive at. And it's doing them a great injustice for the shows that they watch to preach that there is such a narrow path for smart, high-achieving students. By helping them understand that they should be looking for their own unique path based on what's meaningful and fulfilling to them personally, it would not only help to alleviate some of the stress surrounding an ever more competitive college admissions process, but it would also help them build a life that will lead them to more long-term happiness. Thank you.